The next epic DC short animation I will be showing you is called Jonah Hex. This movie begins with Red Doc, a man who claims he could take down anyone and anything, shows up at a village for more booze and actions as he announces himself at a bar. The noisy bar becomes as quiet as a graveyard because everyone is afraid of Red and no one could even dare to look at his face. While he orders a drink, a prostitute comes down the staircase and reveals her name as Madame Lorraine. While she seduces him, she says to Red that she wants to spend the night with him, which he agrees to. But we see a girl who looks at them in worry as Doc takes the prostitute to his room. Lorraine pretends she's leaning towards him for a kiss, but she instead brings out a gun and blasted his head to pieces. She takes all his cash and orders her men to throw his body away. The next day, the strongest bounty hunter in the world called Jonah Hex shows up at that particular village as he was paid $5,000 to capture Red. After taking on a man who taunts him on how he looks, he enters the bar and begins to ask everyone on the whereabouts of Red. That worried girl we saw before meets him, say she knows what happened to him, but in exchange of sharing this information, Jonax has to give some money enough for her to live town. The girl reveals to him that Madame Lorraine, a madam of prostitutes in this bar, normally kills wealthy men and nobody ever sees them again after being invited upstairs. Jonah lives to the end of his bargain, and the girl pecks him in appreciation. Immediately, he orders drinks for everyone in the bar, and his plan was working. Because this actually gets the woman's attention, Madame Lorraine. She tells him to spend the night with him, but never did she know that Jonax already knows her next move. She tries to shoot him the moment his eyes was away, but Jonah avoided it and then proceeds to kill her henchman, who attacks him. As he goes out of the room, the bar owner aims his gun at him, but Jonah eliminates him immediately with his pistol. Menacingly, he asks Lorraine to take him to where she kept the corpse of Red. This woman takes him to a pit and shows him a dark hole where she dumped his body. Jonah takes the woman along with him inside the pit, and it is revealed that this woman has already murdered at least 20 men. While distracted again, Lorraine tries to kill him again with a dagger, but he stops her with a punch. As soon as he takes the body of Red out of the pit, he cuts the rope, leaving the woman to rot in the pit. Lorraine begs him for mercy, saying they can be partners, but Jonah leaves, saying she already has plenty of companions, which is the corpse of all the men she had killed. While she stares at the bodies in panic, that was how this movie ended. The next and final DC short animation I'm going to recap for today is called The Spectre. This one begins with Forster Brenner, a successful movie producer. At his house, he goes into the pool to swim, but he's killed by a bomb underneath his building. Immediately, Jim Corrigan, a man who works at the town police department, arrives to investigate the person responsible for Brenner's death, even though the case was assigned to another officer. He is dating Brenner's daughter, Amy. As he proceeds with his investigation, Jim interrogates the servant or chef in Brenner's house called Fleming, who shows him a security footage of two men wearing a mask and how they placed a bomb under his apartment. Later that night, a man called Flynn is apprehended by the already dead Brenner who accuses Flynn for his murder. How is an already dead person back to life? It turns out to be a figure called the Spectre, a superhero no one sees or knows who haunts down people that commits crime. The Spectre uses his abilities to animate the models and animatronic movie monsters to attack Flynn. Flynn dies after he encounters a gigantic gorilla robot possessed by the Spectre. The next person on his list is a man called Peter McCoy, who tries to run away with a bag full of money. The Spectre causes his car to crash, but Peter still survives, but not for long, as the Spectre makes his car to move and it killed him with a hit. Jim shows up at Amy's house, uninvited by phasing through the wall. Amy pecks him and suggests they run away together. Jim knows that it was Amy who gave those two criminals access code to her father's estate, which means she is the mastermind of her father's death. He had no doubt as soon as he opens a bag, she's holding full of her dad's money. Amy begs him to let go of this conspiracy and she can possibly give him the world, but Jim replies, I have left this world a long time ago. Amy brings out a gun and shoots him so many times, but she is shocked to see the bullets phasing through him. Jim reveals himself as the Spectre, and while Amy tries to escape, the Spectre forms a tornado with the money she is holding and started to slice her flesh in different areas until it killed her. As the cops arrives, Jim turns himself invisible as he walks calmly into his car. The movie ends as Jim says that it is his job to root out evil. This movie begins in an alternative universe where we see two heroic analogous called Lex Luthor and the Jester, breaking into the crime syndicate, which is an evil Justice League headquarters. As they successfully enter the basement, the members of the crime syndicate were immediately informed of their arrival. Together, they destroy the locks with their powers until they finally gain possession of the device they came to steal, which is the quantum trigger. As they take it, a loud alarm rings, and just then, the members of the crime syndicate shows up. 
They chase after Lex and Jester, but upon realizing that it's not possible for both of them at this rate to escape from the headquarters without getting caught, Jester decides to sacrifice himself by choosing to stay behind and fighting enemies alone so he can buy Lex enough time to escape. Two members of the crime syndicate shows up and kills the Jester, but before this guy gave his last breath, he releases a bomb which kills them both as well. Lex sees the explosion from afar and promised his death won't be in vain. Unfortunately, Lex Luthor is confronted by the remaining members of the crime syndicate, but luckily, he brought a device along with him that helps in teleporting him back to Earth. At Earth, while the Justice League members are in their headquarters, Batman builds a teleportation machine and tested it on the Flash, who is at the beach. It really worked when Flash is teleported from his current location to their headquarters. Flash is offended because why would he try a testing machine on him? He concludes Batman really hates him by this act, but his colleagues replies that Batman likes nobody. Meanwhile, Lex Luthor finally arrives in Earth and immediately turns himself to the police. While the officers pointed their guns at him knowing who he is, he says he means no harm, but he really wants to speak with the members of the Justice League. The members of the Justice League are quickly contacted, and they all show up at the police station to meet him. Funny enough, the cops striked him naked to be sure he means no harm. Superman scans Lex's body, and he confirms that this Lex is from another Earth, while the one from this world is still locked up. Due to this, they decided to listen to what he got to say by taking him to their headquarters. Lex explains that his world is much different from theirs, and he is the leader of the Justice League in his universe. He claims that he is the only surviving person in his world's Justice League because the rest of his members were systematically destroyed by some superpowered beings known as the Crime Syndicate. The government cannot control them and the prosecutors cannot prosecute them. The only thing holding the Crime Syndicate back from not overthrowing the president is the threats of nuclear weapons. This is why he came to Earth to seek for their help in stopping this criminal organization in his world. The Justice League members tells Lex to step outside for the moment while they discuss their decision on the matter. Superman says he doesn't trust Lex because he has never heard of any Lex in any world that is good, but Martian Manhunter replies that he read the mind of Lex and he is actually telling the truth. According to Wonder Woman, this their discussion shouldn't be happening at all, because it's their responsibility to save the world or any planet, and they must do so. Only Batman disagrees because they have so much trouble in their world that isn't solved and the building of their headquarters is not even complete. He chooses to stay behind while the rest of the Justice League members agrees to help Lex and his world. At the parallel world, the crime syndicate are in Lex Luthor house. They are searching for the quantum trigger Lex stole from their headquarters, which they plan to use as the equalizer to the nuclear threat from the government. As they search, Lex Luthor shows up at the parallel universe with the Justice League. After a long and epic fight, they subdued all the crime syndicate members, but Lex advises that they should retreat because the backup of the crime syndicate will soon show up. They all retreated for the air upon Superman lead, but all man from the crime syndicate attacks them. He is like Batman in this world and gave him a really tough time, but Wonder Woman manages to take control of his plane and flies the lead to a hideout. The members of the crime syndicate organize a meeting. They all consist of Superwoman, Almon, Power Ring, John Quick, and their leader, the Ultraman. They discuss on how to replace their dead members and also talks about ways to retrieve the Quantum Trigger back from Lex, which the plan to use to take control over the government. With it in their possession, the government will have no choice but to entirely surrender to them or die. Meanwhile, a president daughter called Rose gives a speech to the people. She tells them to stop being afraid of the crime syndicate. The press questions her on why she is in contradiction to her father's policies, who believes it will be safer for the citizens if the crime syndicate are not challenged in any way. They also tell her that they don't have the power to fight these criminals. But Rose concludes that might doesn't make right, but by doing the right thing, it makes them stronger. Lex takes the Justice League members to Jester's basement, where he tells them everything about the crime syndicate, including how each of the six members have various meta-humans working under them. They will be outnumbered in a fight, so Lex suggests they should hide for a moment and a think of a strategy, but Superman detested against this. He divides the Justice members into group to attack as soon as possible. At Almond's basement, he reveals to his lover Superwoman about his findings on a device at Lex's house that can be used to travel to different universe. Half of the Justice League goes to attack all the metahumans working for the crime syndicate, while Superman and Lex goes to attack their boss of all bosses, Ultraman, but they meet his secretary Olsen. He goes to strike them, but Superman catches his blow without any effort. As they hold him off, Lex goes to fight Ultraman himself. Ultraman beats up Lex without him getting to fight, but however, Lex brings out a kryptonite from his pocket which weakens Ultraman. With this advantage, Lex overpowers Ultraman and handcuffs him, sending him and Secretary to jail. The President, Slade Wilson, requests an audience with the Justice League. 
Rather than be thankful, he yells at them for challenging the crime syndicate because by doing so, the people's lives are at risk. He lets them know that he has already ordered the release of the Ultraman and tells the Justice League to return back to their world. His daughter Rose enters and calls her father a coward. With the Justice League, this is the perfect chance to stop the crime syndicate once and for all, but Slade Wilson is still adamant with his decision. The Justice League members leaves his office saying they will never give up this fight, not when they finally have the chance to win it. Without the crime syndicate knowing, Allman reveals to his lover Superwoman that the Quantum Trigger is actually a bomb, which he plans to use to destroy the world. His reason for this decision is because even if they are the best in this world, there is an alternate world where they are the worst or opposite of who they are. So the best thing he can do is to destroy the original Earth planet because by doing so, the other alternate universe will be destroyed along with it. Ultraman meet President Wilson and warns him to put his daughter in control because if she does another revolt against them, he will kill her. Superwoman accepts to support Allman with his idea, so she takes the teleportation device from him and travels to the Justice League Earth to retrieve back the Quantum Trigger, which Lex kept in that world. When she arrives, Batman gets alarmed on their arrival. He shows up with a mech suit to fight them, but he is defeated. He calls the remaining members of the Justice League to assist him, but they couldn't stop Superwoman from taking the Quantum Trigger back to her world. Rose hosts another revolt against the crime syndicate. During her speech, a member of the syndicate tries to assassinate her from afar, but Martian Manhunter stops him. He throws him off the building and handed him over to the police. Rose thanks him for his help and accepted his proposal to keep protecting her until all these is over. It turns out that Batman also followed them to their world as he engages in a fight with Superwoman. Batman throws a ghast and after she falls unconscious from it, he ties her down and takes her to the Justice League members for interrogation. Batman questions Lex on why the Quantum Trigger is so important that could make Superwoman to come to their world to get it. Lex lets them know that Almond is planning to use it to destroy the worlds. That's why he is even risking his life in any way possible to keep it away from them. At the crime syndicate basement, a messenger from Superwoman gives Batman the Quantum Trigger and he smiles menacingly. The Justice League arrives at their basement and a fight begins between these two powerful groups. Allman takes the Quantum Trigger to the original Earth to donate the bomb on the worlds. Lex tells the members of the crime syndicate about what Allman is planning. They are really shocked that Allman and Superwoman would go behind their back and they appear not to be in support about Allman motives on destroying the worlds. Batman tries to go to the original Earth to stop Allman, but they discover that he has locked them up. The only way and option to get there is getting a really fast person who can reverse and open portals. Flash smiles as he is the right guy for the job, but Batman says he shouldn't go because he is not fast enough. Quick Johnny volunteers to do this and uses a very incredible speed to open a portal and Batman immediately goes inside to fight Allman. After a long struggle, Allman defeated Batman, and while he smiles heading forward to end his life, Batman laughs as he is two steps ahead of him. Batman ties Allman down with the bomb he created and teleported Allman to a deserted planet where the quantum trigger bomb exploded there. As soon as Batman returns back to the parallel world, Quick Johnny stops his reverse, but surprisingly, he is already old. He says to Batman that he knows that he lied about Flash not being fast enough because he knows Flash might die. Quick Johnny still isn't angry at Batman because this actually gave him a chance to do something good in his life by stopping the world from destruction. He dies with a smile of relief on his face. Superman tells the remaining members of the crime syndicate to surrender as they are outnumbered. Martian Manhunter shows up with the President Army, and as soon as Slade threatened to kill them with nuclear weapons, they had no choice but to surrender. The President thanks the Justice League for their help, and he has even sent his army to catch the remaining bad guys. His daughter Rose is in love with Martian Manhunter as she refuses him to live, but he replies that I have already lost my first home, and I have made a promise to protect my new one. They both kissed and joined the rest of the Justice League in returning back to their world. Superman admits to Batman that he was right, and they shouldn't have interfered in that world, but Batman says we were both right. The movie begins with two men chasing after a gray cat in an attempt to shoot it dead. On top of a building is a girl in black suit watching their every move. They chased after the cat to a bridge. The cat with no other choice jumps inside the river as the men aims at it repeatedly. They presume the cat is already dead so when their leader called Rough Cut arrives, they relay the news about getting the job done and takes off with him in his limousine. The woman on black suit is revealed to be Catwoman who was found under the bridge with a gray cat. She finds a yellow wristband around its neck and decided to track down where it came from. Later that evening, Rough Cut and his two bodyguards go to a strip club. They were so intimidating that it chased away the people sitting at the front seat without them uttering a single word. A beautiful woman dances so well to Rough Cut's satisfaction, so he gives her a small chunk of diamond. 
Catwoman enters the strip club and covers for the other stripper women, but this only proves to be a way for her to confront Rough Cut. After dancing for a little bit, she swiftly uses her whip to take down Rough Cut bodyguards. She shoots her gun in the air to chase out everyone in the club, leaving Catwoman and Rough Cut alone. After a long fight between them both, he runs away before she could catch him. She isn't ready to give up so she steals a bike and chased after him on his limousine. Rough Cut tries to stop her with his gun and even takes down a trailer but she avoided all his attacks. She traces him to a shipyard where she attacks him again but gets defeated. Rough Cut tries to end this once and for all as he enters a crane and tries using it to crush her, but she slips the crane hook under the truck and escapes before it crashes, the hook flying over and slicing a ship full of goods in half. The truck overturns and Rough Cut died. When Catwoman goes to the ship, she found a dozen of trafficked girls, which is revealed to be in a secret cargo shipment. Catwoman notices Holly Robinson to be one of the girls, a friend of hers. After the police shows up, Catwoman seems disappointed with Holly Robinson, but she explained that she had no choice because she needed some money to leave town. Catwoman gives Holly a handful of diamonds to help her travel and take care of herself. The film ends with Catwoman jumping from one building to another as Holly watches her disappear into the night.